Welcome to Work Breakdown Structure Basics, also known as WBS for short. Let's get right into it. What is a WBS anyways? In James Lewis's Project Planning, Scheduling, and Control book, which is regarded as one of the best practical project management books available, that without taking scheduling into account, the WBS tool provides a way to identify the work on a project. So what does a WBS look like? In our scope definition, the easy way tutorial, we showed how project scope can be easily composed and decomposed into work which are part of the WBS. We tend to identify what gets done in a project as work. I like using cardboard boxes to represent the work. How's that? I'm not sure anybody would use cardboard boxes, but it's almost like each cardboard box represents a major piece of work. And inside that work are the little boxes, where each of these boxes represent more detailed work. It's pretty neat visual, I would say. You've got three major pieces of work, and in the second one, we've identified two more detailed work activities. This hierarchical nature of a WBS is used in other PMI PMBOK guide tools, like, for example, the risk breakdown structure, also known as the RBS. So where does a WBS actually start? Let's get rid of the uh, boxes, or packages as I like calling them. They're gone. Actually, for those of you all that have been involved with PMI project management for a number of years, there was the document called the initial WBS that was created in a preliminary project scope statement process. This typically represented the top level work. In other words, those open cardboard boxes I just showed you. And interestingly enough, this was part of the third edition of the PMBOK guide, and this was summarily dropped in the fourth and fifth editions of the PMBOK guide. Let's go right ahead and erase that thing the old edition of the PMBOK guide. And voila, he's gone. Okay, the scope management knowledge area, and I'll go right ahead and write that. Scope management knowledge area, and I use KA to represent knowledge area, is centered around the definition of the project baseline. In other words, the WBS. In fact, there's a whole process in the planning process group dedicated, as you can see, to the creation of a WBS. So I even deal with a WBS. Once the WBS is created and agreed upon, the scope associated with the WBS is actually monitored and controlled throughout the project's life cycle. In fact, the outputs of the collect requirements and defined scope processes should help create your WBS. So what does a WBS look like anyways? Well, I'm glad you asked. We used cardboard boxes before, but this time we'll show simple blocks to represent this. WBS starts at the top and identifies the work. There are two pieces of work called Work 1 and Work 2. And within Work 1, we have two additional work-related, almost subtasks under it, called Work 1.1, Work 1.2. And under Work 2, there's only one on Work 2.1. But under Work 1.2, there's more detail that's required. So there's a Work 121 and a Work 122. Just to show you an example, underneath Work 122, which is further definition from Work 1.2 and Work 1, there is something called a work package, which I've denoted as 1.2.2.1. Without the numbers, you're going to find great difficulty identifying specific work areas. So numbering them in this way, much like what you were used to in grade school with outlining things, really does help. You could view these also as levels, where the first level includes Work 1 and Work 2, level two, one level down, and you keep on going. So you can see how that should work. So what is a work package? According to the PMBOK guide, the lowest level WBS component has four specific characteristics. The work can be scheduled. It can be cost estimated, monitored, and lastly, it can be controlled. So you know you've got something defined at the lowest level as a work package if those four characteristics hold true. There is a rule of thumb that I find very useful. And please, by all means, limit the number of levels that you've defined in your WBS to no more than four. If you start finding yourself creating more than that, you're either creating way too many, and you may need to expand the upper layers. I mentioned earlier that WBS items are not meant to represent the schedule, and I wasn't lying. 
When you're defining the WBS, you could try to schedule it at the same time, causing a whole lot of something that's very bad. Risk. Let's put some devil horns at the top. Okay, risk. When you're defining the WBS, you'll be trying too hard to schedule it, causing frustration. So you have the risk of incomplete WBS, and you could easily find yourself getting really bogged down in the details. This gets to that so-called 85-90% completion that you see in so many teams. You also get into potential risk by compromising the identification of the effort. So it's almost like force-fitting the work and combining work packages when you really shouldn't. There isn't a single way of approaching the creation of WBS by levels. But here's some common ways. First is by organization. This is by department, such as engineering, QA, product management. The good part, this is good for outsourcing, part of your project. The bad, well, you and your team may try hard to structure the work, fit how your team is organized, which may not be the best breakdown of that work by organization. The second way is by phase, which may work very, very well when you define the work over time the planning, design phase, and then the implementation phase and all that stuff. The good part is, is that it helps you think in chronological order, which is by time, which is very natural. The bad part is you start to schedule way too soon. If there's one thing you get out of this training, do not attempt to schedule too early in the process when you're coming up with the WBS items. And lastly, an approach to create a WBS is to identify the work based on deliverables. Now this may not make a lot of sense what you see right here, but what this is is like for example, if you're developing software, you could be developing components such as the lightning bolt meaning communications, the microphone meaning audio. You could do it by user interface or by subsystems that provide calculations, things like that. The good part, again the pro, is that it's a great way to show if the work is spread out into way too many subsystems so you can identify risks pretty early. And one thing for those of you that have been involved with software IT projects, the fewer subsystems that you touch on a given project, certainly the less risk you're going to introduce. So the con, that's a funny looking C, is that you could find yourself going back, the undo, over and over and over by trying to identify work that's realistic for the project. So we'll put in deliverables. So which is best? According to Rita Mulcahy's PM Crash Course book, she prefers building WBS by phase and not by organization or deliverables. Her reasoning is that understanding of one work package's dependency on other work packages works best. This also fits with Agile where work packages can be grouped together into short development cycles called sprints. Without the need of an expensive facilitator to get your team working well, the WBS can be used as a great cross-functional team building exercise. If you've got product management, if you have customer support, you have engineering, and you have QA, getting everybody involved and not using consensus techniques necessarily, but more of a buy-in what does it take to make this a successful event? Easy. Planning, planning, and more planning. The more you plan, the better the outcome. Phew! And one other technique that works quite well, and I'm going to write it down, is time boxing, the creation of a WBS. So all in all, the WBS can be viewed as the center focal point to get a team working together to define the work for a project. There is a risk with creating a WBS with way too much detail. There is a concept of rolling wave planning during a project's life cycle. The iterative nature of modern day projects postpone the actual lower level work package definition until other project clarifications have taken place. And again, this is showing time where the project doesn't necessarily go as you would expect. It wavers a little off course, especially as you're learning and discovering. The project is composed of taking the initial WBS items and breaking them down in a learn-as-you-go technique throughout the entire project. For those of you who lead projects in the technology sector, you'll know exactly what I mean. This completes work breakdown structure basics. So now you know. Yeah.